It has now been two years since BH Cosmetics has released anything palette worthy or anything like worthy to really talk about and I feel like I want to spill some tea. I want to tell you about some things that I weren't able to tell you at the time. So I am just going to come out, I'm going to get ready because I'm heading out and I am going to tell you about my interaction with Makeup Revolution, with BH Cosmetics and the things that almost happened. And I'm just going to be using some makeup. I will link these things down below. I'm basically, I am using a full face of the things that I mentioned as my yearly favorites so far. I did a video where I was just talking about all the great makeup that's been released this year so far. And I feel like sometimes we don't always get the opportunity to use our favorites because there's always new, new, new coming. But I was telling you that I was going to take this summer to try and buy less makeup and just use the makeup that I love a bit because you know, I'm busy and stuff. So this is just me taking the opportunity to do a full face with makeup that I love. <laughs> and I will link everything down below. So here's the thing, BH Cosmetics has been around for a really long time. A lot of people will count BH Cosmetics as one of the OG beauty brands. People were using their big, what's like 88 shadow palettes and they were having all kinds of stuff that people were super, super excited about. I didn't necessarily get into BH Cosmetics up until I want to say their collab with Carly Bible. I think that that was like my first encounter with the brand. And I remember thinking, I remember being very fresh with YouTube when that happened. And I remember being nicer. And that's something that people are like, oh, you cannot trust like big YouTubers. I am so much more trustworthy now than I was when I just began with YouTube because I tried some makeup that I really thought was mediocre, but I was afraid to tell you. But I can tell you now. The BH Cosmetics and Carly Bible palette, it was pretty mediocre. The highlighters were good, the eyeshadows were meh, according to me, but I was a little afraid to say it at that point because I was so small and I thought that people were going to be angry with me if I didn't like someone's collab. So I'm telling you now. And then it took me all the way up until 2020. I think I tried that Carnival something palette and I like that one too, but then they released the ice cream shop palettes in 2020 And then I tried the blueberry muffin palette and I named that palette. That was also all of this is 2020 I named that one the best palette of 2020 and I think that that is as long as I have been like ranking palettes and I don't know if I did a full palette ranking this year but I think that 2020 was the first year that I did that if I'm not totally mistaken and I remember having BH Cosmetics as my number one it was an affordable palette I really liked the quality there was something had changed something has shifted and they were just making really high quality eyeshadows I did though um, notice when they started releasing those gemstone palettes because I did review those as well. Let me see. That was in 2021. They released those gemstone palettes and they also released the Passion in Paris, which was my favorite palette of 2021. Note this. This is how much I love BH Cosmetics. I named their palette best palette of the year two years in a row. Absolutely love them. And that's some where where it ended because in 2021 I did the ranking of all of the gemstone palettes and I thought some of them were good and some of them were so-so and I also noticed that there were some discrepancies and I think that it was just quality control that was a little off and I think that whatever this is me guessing this is me guessing I think that whatever samples the factory sent them they were like yeah that's fine as long as the color was somewhat what they were looking for they weren't necessarily maybe trying to peak the quality because if they did, they would have put more effort into making sure that every palette had the same quality and I didn't think that they did. But that doesn't really matter because I loved BH Cosmetics. But one thing that happened, that was also in 2021, I have some notes here. So in 2021, in September, I was so reluctant about this. They had a collab with Doja Cat and I think they had a collab with Igesilia as Azealia, I think I'm saying that correctly, just before that as well. And I remember thinking how weird it was for them to do collabs with celebrities instead of doing collabs with influencers, because in 2021, influencers or like creator collabs was still very much bringing in a lot of uh, customers and selling a lot of product. And I remember thinking, why are we doing celebrity collabs? Because we remember the was it Kourtney Kardashian and Becca? That collab did, that did not do very good. And I just feel like 
celebrity collabs with makeup brands are not as hot as they used to be. And I thought that it was really weird because then it happened in 2022. This was February of 2022, BH Cosmetics filed for bankruptcy. And I will say I wasn't super surprised. I made a full video on this. I talked about why I thought it happened the way that it did. And I definitely think that one of the reasons is that they were only really doing eyeshadow palettes and nothing else really stood out in their collection. And for a brand, eventually you do have to venture out because even though eyeshadow palettes might be the thing that brings you in the most money in the moment, few people go through an eyeshadow palette and then buy the exact same eyeshadow palette again. That is not very common. I have a dry spot on my under eye and it's a little swollen. I don't know what I've done. But if it's looking a little weird on this side of the eye, that is why. I have done something to upset my eye, but I don't really know what. But they didn't really have any of those products that people love and repurchase. Mascaras, brow products, concealers, powders. They didn't really do any of that. And I did a full video talking about why I thought they were not doing the, the best. And they would not file, I think it's a chapter seven of bankruptcy. They filed a chapter 11. Oh, I have something in my eye. And chapter 11 basically means we're not giving up. We want to continue. And they were looking for someone to buy. Oh, I got the timeline wrong. They went into bankruptcy in January, 2022. And then in February of 2022, make a revolution, revolution beauty bought BH Cosmetics. And I remember my thumbnail being yikes because I was not at the time the biggest fan of Makeup Revolution. I thought that they were so much more quantity over quality and they were just coming out with so many things and a lot of it just looked like landfill waiting to happen. I just did not love the products. It wasn't my favorite and I was really worried about BH Cosmetics that they were going to turn BH Cosmetics into an American makeup revolution basically, and just churn out a lot of bullshit, let's be honest. I did say that the smart business move would be to use the really beautiful formulations that BH Cosmetics had and like pull those into makeup revolution because makeup revolution had not been known for having great quality eyeshadows. They were very hit or miss, mostly miss. I will say since then, I think that makeup revolution has come up with some really good products and I even mentioned I think at least one product in the best products of 2024 uh, so far. And I think they have really reeled it in. So this is where the story takes a little bit of a turn because this is when stuff is happening that I have not been able to talk about before. Not because I was under contract, anything like that, mainly because I don't know, out of respect for people. I don't, I don't know really why I didn't talk about this. But this is the time after my video in February of 2022. This is when the former owner of Makeup Revolution, Adam Mintu, reached out to me and said, we would like to have a meeting. I'm not even going to pretend that I wasn't very nervous having that phone call because we had a Zoom call. Me, the former owner of Makeup Revolution, Adam Mentu, who is the founder and the owner, and also a couple of other people at the brand. And I was worried because I have been spending my entire internet career shitting on Makeup Revolution. <laughs> And remember, this came just after me posting a video saying yikes about the fact that they bought uh, BH Cosmetics and that I was worried that they were going to ruin it all. And then he wants to talk with me. I was prepared to be read the filth. The meeting was nothing like I thought. And it was very validating for me as a person because the meeting was basically Adam saying, we have watched your BH Cosmetics content. We watched your video. Um, first when they said that, I was like, oh, we, oh so, and so it begins. We watched your video and we wanted to have this meeting because the points that you brought up are correct. This is why all of this happened the way that it did. And you are correct. We bought BH Cosmetics because we want to have a brand that like was in the US basically that uh, had a good reputation in the US and uh, they wanted to get a hold of their formulas. That makes perfect sense to me because they had really good uh, formulas and he was saying their goal is not to make BH Cosmetics have Makeup Revolution formulas, but for Makeup Revolution to have some of the BH Cosmetics formulas. 
And then they asked me if I wanted to collab. So this is the collab that almost happened. And clearly this was after me being such a sucker and such a fangirl for um, BH Cosmetics for years. They were basically like, we think that you could breathe some new life into BH Cosmetics and nothing made me more honored than that. I was basically vibrating at this point and we would like you to collab. And they also said, if you would rather collab with Makeup Revolution, we can make that happen. I'm like, no, I think, <laughs> I think BH Cosmetics will be fine. Thank you very much. Although I will say it's a better business opportunity to do it with Makeup Revolution because they are in so many different places. You could prop, like if you make, oh, that was a lot. If you make a collab with Makeup Revolution, I think you can make a lot of money because they're available in so many different places. But basically that is where the conversation ended. And he was like, we're gonna put you on the Makeup Revolution PR list. We're gonna put you on the BH Cosmetics PR list. You are correct. We should be sending out more PR, especially from BH Cosmetics, because that was one of the things that I said that I thought was a reason why they just didn't survive in the harsh influencer makeup like environment that was going on at that point. They didn't send out any PR, even to the people that were reviewing them all the time and that raved about them. And I'm not saying that anyone owes anyone any like PR or anything like that, but it really is a wasted opportunity for a brand to not send out PR to people who love your brand, especially if they have even like somewhat of a following. And I'm even, not even talking about me. I'm talking about people that have like 20,000 followers. 10,000 followers. If you as a brand notice that someone is absolutely loving your stuff, it is a missed opportunity to not send them PR. So this was all happening in 2022, in the beginning of 2022. And let me tell you, I was very excited about it for about a couple of days until <laughs> the news came out about Makeup Revolution being in some financial hardships because they had been not 100% truthful about their bookkeeping. And they had been manipulating the numbers. There are content out here like on YouTube about this, but they had been manipulating the numbers to make it look like they were doing better than they actually were. And it ended up with the owner of Makeup Revolution, the owner and founder, Adam Mintu, stepping down. And I never heard from them again. I'm gonna be using a couple of the palettes. I have three palettes here in front of me that I said were some of my favorite palettes so far of the year, and I'm just gonna be using some of them. I honestly don't have like the best idea of what I wanted to do. I just knew I wanted to have the bright watermelon cheeks and I wanted to play with some eyeshadow. So <laughs> this is a play as we go. And as you all know, what ended up happening is that I did a second collab with Uden's Eye. And I remember when I got the offer from BH Cosmetics, I was of course very, very excited initially. And then all of these other things came out. And at that time, Uden's Eye also reached out to me and asked me, would you like to do a second round? And I remember sitting with all of this for a little bit. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna go with Uden's Eye because I love Uden's Eye and I know what I'm gonna get with Uden's Eye. I know that our process in working is gonna be great. I know that they're gonna basically let me run amok and do whatever I want. And also I felt like everything was just so up in the air with BH Cosmetics. And I mean, that's also smart because BH Cosmetics ended up not being anything because of the change in everything that was going on. And also since then, BH Cosmetics hasn't really released a lot of things. They have released two collections with eyeshadow and I remember Makeup Revolution saying, and I did review both of them, one I liked that actually was sent to me in PR, but since then I've not gotten any PR from BH uh, Cosmetics. But I remember the one that was a little bit more neutral that they sent to me had that good quality. And I remember the quads that I bought that was travel quads and I used to love the travel palettes from them. They were just really subpar quality and seemed very mismatched. And I remember Makeup Revolution saying at the time, both of these were created before the uh, company filed for bankruptcy, but went into production after 
um, well, be, like make a revolution, bought them and was able to like, I'm guessing, inject some funds so that they can actually pay for the production. Because with makeup, you have to pay for production, like when it starts, you cannot pay for the products. Like when you're selling them, you have to make an initial investment to uh, be able to get them. So both of those collections were exactly how I remember Beach Cosmetics. Some were great, some were mediocre. Uh, there was a, it was very palette heavy. There was a couple of liquid lipsticks, but they never really bothered to get into um, some of those things that were like, what are people gonna repurchase? Like, how are you gonna keep your brand afloat? Because BH Cosmetics was an indie brand, but it wasn't this small run from home kind of a brand. The bigger the operation you have, the more people are dependent on you and the more you have to keep things churning. As an indie brand, if you don't release anything for six months and you don't have any employees or maybe you just employed family, you can still keep your brand going. It doesn't really matter that much. I feel like this crease turned out really cute. I am, I've been dreaming about using this shadow again. It is this pale green here. It is called, if I could read, Water Lily. I can see that. Ooh, there is even a mirror on here and it's got plastic on it. This is so satisfying when you get to like pull the... Since then, BH Cosmetics has released a couple of things. It has been some, some of those things that I thought they should have released when they were more popular. And it's just a little bit too late. And unfortunately, the packaging feels very cheapy because it felt almost like the kind of, which was one of the problems with that collab with uh, Igazelia and Doja Cat, is that the packaging felt cheaper they do cardboard packaging really good but they whoever is doing their plastic packaging should not be doing packaging for anyone and they released some brow products and they released some lip products and they released some bronzers and blushes but the problem was it wasn't good enough those formulations and the packaging unfortunately just made them feel like old makeup revolution and I know how long it takes to get like things into production and how long it takes to develop things and like get them released and it probably was some of those things that makeup revolution started working on with them when they bought the brand but the thing is it was too little too late and what they released didn't feel like a new and updated version of BH Cosmetics. It just felt like another version of old Makeup Revolution. And like I said, I feel like Makeup Revolution has released some really, really good products this year and last year as well. So it just felt so weird. And now I'm gonna take a shadow from the Groovy Garden. I'm gonna take this one here. That's like a little bit of a lime green topper. I think that's gonna be great. Oh, that is too much. Oh, calm down. And I've seen a lot of comments from people saying, why would Makeup Revolution buy BH Cosmetics just to let it rot, just to do nothing with it? And I am here to just maybe put in a last piece of the puzzle to say that I know from like discussions with the actual person who bought BH Cosmetics that they had every intention to relaunch BH Cosmetics, they had every intention to do all of those things that they hadn't done perfectly before. They wanted to start out sending PR. They wanted to do collabs with influencers. They wanted to create even more products than just eyeshadow palettes. They had all the intention in the world, but then Makeup Revolution themselves got themselves in some hot water because of, well, possibly, allegedly not very good financial decisions. And I think that they just had to drop some things. And I think that developing BH Cosmetics became one of those things that they were like, listen, we are officially a sinking ship because of some questionable decisions that had been made. And we cannot keep everyone afloat. You have to throw some things overboard. And if we have the opportunity to fish them up later and do something with BH Cosmetics at a later point, when we are in a better financial situation, we will. But I honestly think, and this is my own personal opinion about this, based on the conversations that we had and based on these choices that I've seen the brand do since, 
I think that they had every intention to do something, but just could not afford it because of what happened with uh, Makeup Revolution. And when Adam Mintu left the uh, company, I lost the contact that I had at the company. And the only person I, whose contact I still had, because I don't even know if the person that worked with PR um, at BH Cosmetics at the point that sent me that first PR package, I don't even know if that person still works there. I don't even know if they still have people actually like working full time for BH Cosmetics uh, because I only got one PR package and then I didn't get anything else. But I have since been on the Makeup Revolution PR list and I have gotten some really cool stuff. I even was able to get a code with them. So I feel like I've seen, I've even gotten some comments on some old BH Cosmetics uh, videos this spring, uh, summer. And this got me thinking, I didn't let you know. I didn't tell you about all the things that actually happened. And I thought that it's time for me to spill the tea. It's time for me to tell you what was going on behind the scenes. And hopefully this fills in a last puzzle piece in wondering what happened with BH Cosmetics. Why didn't they do anything? because I happen to know that at least they had every ambition to. So I'm almost done with the look, but I'm just gonna add the lipstick that I mentioned as one of my yearly favorites so far of 2024. And this is from Make A Revolution, and this is their satin lipstick, and this one is in Wifey Dusky Pink. Love this formula. And this packaging is beautiful too, and that's what I'm saying. I feel like Make A Revolution has reeled it in a little bit, and a lot of the things that they are releasing now actually seem a little thought out, good packaging, good formulations. I remember that um, glowy foundation that so many people love that they released. It wasn't for me because I'm oily combo, but a lot of people loved that foundation. I think that's really cute. And since I did red on the eyes and pink on the cheeks, I think this pinky nudie color on me is perfect. I don't know if this video made any sense whatsoever, but I feel like I really wanted to talk about this. I really wanted to talk about the fact that like, the collab that almost happened because I remember the barrage of comments that I used to get when I posted videos about BH Cosmetics because I posted videos all the time, ranking, trying, reviewing, gushing over the brand and people saying, when is the collab coming? When is the PR coming? And I just wanted to let you know that we were this close. We were this close, but some of the major mistakes that happened over at uh, Makeup Revolution got in the way. And I'm not bitter about it. I'm not sad about it. I was able to do a second collab with Unisa instead, and I absolutely love what we did. But still, it's it was really rewarding for me to have that conversation with the owner of such a large company to just say, all the things you speculated about are true. Because it also made me feel, I kind of know what I'm doing. I do have the finger on the pulse. I do understand this business. I do understand this space. And I'm not saying I'm an expert, but I'm also saying it gave me some confidence that I'm not an idiot. I do get things. I do understand things. I can see how things are stringed together. I understand if you do this, then this will happen. So I hope this was an interesting video, a little bit entertaining, if nothing else. It's like gossip and tea, but not really. Just, I'm just sharing some insider stories that I have. And if you're interested in any of the makeup that I'm wearing, everything is gonna be in the description box. I will be able to link some things in YouTube shopping as well, but not in the makeup, of course. But I hope you're having a great day and I will see you soon again in a new video. Bye.